We are back with episode nine. I had to re-record this episode, uh, so we did miss a game. Uh, we'll be doing breast highlights today, and then we'll be coming back for the following game. And again, it's because I forgot to move my stupid microphone, uh, and I realized it when I went to go render the video. So, yeah, uh, luckily I hadn't played ahead any since uh, the episode that uh, I'm re-recording here. But I do appreciate you guys bearing with me through those troubles. Let's roll the intro and uh, get into the breast highlights, and then we'll kind of catch up on what we've missed due to my stupidity. And, uh, hey, whatever. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys back in just a second. Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 9 of our Journeyman Save. Uh, this is the match that we actually played out last time against Brest. Here we are in the 59th minute, Quinonez lays it off to Garcia, and he blazes that one into the box and gives the double fist pump, and we win that one 1-0. One uh, vintage defense. Uh, we also saw PSG win the league, Ligoon, again. Yeah, we're in second. So 23 points off PSG. They've had one loss, no draws on the entire season. That's insane. Uh, you can see we are in second. We're even on points with Lil, plus three in goal differential. Let's take a look at the schedule. I believe last episode was around here. But, you know, I'm going to leave that there so you guys can kind of check out the, the scores. We're on a pretty good run uh, since the loss to Rhymes. Uh, a draw against Lil, a draw against Mets. But uh, we do have a lot of wins in there as well. 4-2 over Red Star, the 1-0 over Brest. And uh, you can see Arudia has gotten back into the scoring. He had a hat trick against Red Star. Uh, but he scored in uh, several games, uh, let's see, going all the way back to Rhymes. Uh, one, two, three, four, four matches in a row with a goal, and then four goals in two matches uh, for us there. If we take a look at the squad so you guys can see the current stats, uh, we have 22 goals in 31 for Martinez, 19 in 25 for Arudia. I think Arudia turned out to be a pretty good signing. Uh, 10 goals for Monde on our youth team, so that doesn't really count. I don't, that's not first team. No, that's, that's not first team. So let's take those guys out. Uh, Ibarra, Pekaranen with seven. Uh, you can see Pekaranen's out for about two weeks. Dopper is suspended, and Jimenez is out for three more weeks uh, with some injuries. A couple of those occurred during the international break. And uh, also, Pekaranen is uh, challenging or broke the uh, club assist record. So that is, uh, he's a big miss right now being out. Uh, he is a huge part of our club and um, 28 years old, though. <laughs> you know, we are trying to get younger with this side. They were so old when we got them. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's what's going on. We are going to be playing uh, Sasho Montbelliard, so let's get to that. Well, let's pop back in. We've had our annual youth intake, so let's jump into there. Uh, not, not looking good. Uh, these guys, I, uh, maybe two of them. I mean, he's a number 10, but he does have some pace. Maybe we can train him up to be a central midfielder. And then uh, Emerson Alves, he can play all three center. He can play all three back line positions. He's six one, decent crossing for a fifteen year old, marking, passing, tackling, maybe a ball playing defender. I don't think he'll ever start for us, but you know that might be somebody we can move on. I just don't see anyone else that's gonna crack the. Score side unless we just you know unless my director of football says hey these guys can help our, our youth system just for numbers uh that would be the only reason 
Uh, but we're looking at maybe two guys max. Uh, we'll see. We'll figure that out. So the director of football suggested we sign five players. It was the two that I was looking at, uh, but then a couple of other lower end guys, mainly just for numbers, but that they could be retrained and have some potential. I mean, this guy has pretty good technicals already at 16, uh, very good determination, which, uh, you know, the Murphy factor says that, you know, that plays a big role in these guys developing. Of course, that's more in the other save where you're a semi pro team. Serge Meyer, 15-year-old French winger. Uh, he can cross. He can dribble. Um, really good acceleration, so maybe his pace will come around. Uh, we'll see. Suleiman Leger, uh, striker up top. We looked at him. He needs to work on his finishing. Again, I don't think any of these five guys will ever play for us or start for us. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to bring them on if they have some talent. We can sell them off for, you know, a half million, million dollars or more down the road. Uh, we have also looked at uh, re-extending a couple of loans. Uh, Fran has started 32 matches for us. He's 25. Uh, we're looking at bringing him back. Pollock, we're looking at bringing him back on a uh, as a squad player. Don't know if they're going to let us do that. Uh, and also Martinez, our striker. Uh, our leading scorer, we're going to try to bring him back because we are going to let Aziz Marty, our veteran team leader, go. Uh, so we kind of need to make sure we keep some striker numbers, not knowing exactly what we're going to have for next season. So we are going to move into that. So we're going to go with uh, Khan Yuxel in goal, a back four of Fran, Nimic, Pollock, and Quinones. Two of those guys are guys I just mentioned we're going to try to re-sign. Nagano and Garcia in the mid, Ibarra and Mulling on the wings, Arudia Martinez up top. Uh, pretty much the guys that you would expect. Uh, looks like we've got a few guys wanted here. Quinones wanted on a transfer. Um... The only reason I would move him is because he's Colombian, and we are limited severely on what we can sign, the, the numbers we can sign. I think it's five, maybe six. Uh, it's five lone players, so maybe it's six, six uh, non-Euros or four non-Euros. But I like him. He's played a lot for us, but if we get a big offer for him, I could consider it. Nimick's leaving. Uh, now, he's a lone player uh, also, so I'm going to have to address that. We're already looking at our left back. He's wanted by Leeds, Lincoln, Middleborough, and Empoli. I really don't want to move him, but again, that's a guy. I mean, he could command a large fee uh, from Uruguay. We may end up doing that and look, just looking at replacing him. Uh, Nagano, no, no. Uh, Martinez, that's our bid. Williams is retiring. And Gomez, we couldn't extend him either because he's already joining another club. Anybody else wanted in here? Aguiar is wanted by a couple of clubs. I'll let him go in the offseason. He's Portuguese, but I can let him go because we just signed that other keeper, right? Uh, Doumbia. So. Anyway, that's the uh, side that we're going with. Let's get into the match. We are playing on the road. God, well, imagine if we had that kind of attendance, how, how we would be doing financially, right? That would be incredible. I'll hit it back in. There we go. Martinez is going to run onto that. He's got a clean break. Arudia needs to give him an outlet. He's into the box, and he has to pull it up, lays it off, and it's cleared away. So let me ask you guys about that. We're talking about the fans in the stands. So let me know in the comments, is that, is that one of the bigger issues, or, it, or is it an issue in real life? Uh, I mean, if you had a, if you had a seventh-tier club, oh... Rudan beats beats uh, Yuxel for the goal. That's number thirty, and we are in a hole. But if you know, if you had a say a seventh tier team in England, right, and they're you know they're not non league or whatever, and and semi professional, you know, and they're drawing two, you know, two hundred, three hundred fans, you know, per game, right? 
if over a court, let's say, you know, five, six years down, they were up in League One, League Two, uh, would they still be drawing, you know, two to three, maybe 400 fans? Or would they be drawing 1,000, 1,500 fans more in line with what other clubs at that level are drawing? And and similar situation, you know, if they would get, oh, why didn't I bar a go for that? If they if they ended up getting promoted to the championship or to the Premier League, would they still be drawing? You know, boy, that guy just beat two of our guys. Luckily, he was at the post. Um, but I think the I think the attendance is one of the bigger issues. You know, if you were in the Premier League, there's no way you'd only be drawing. You know. 4,000 fans. There's no way. Um, and I, you know, because, you know, it, it just wouldn't happen. Now, on the flip side of that, and this is mainly for you guys that are based in England. Ooh, that went up into the stands. Where would, assuming that that happened, right? Uh, looks like he wants to come off. And see, this. Uh, just got the notice he wants to come off this now it says he wants to stay on but you know what let's bring Leclerc on give him a give him some game time we're only in the eighth minute it's an early subage but where would the fans come from so if you've got I don't know let's use um let's use Lelugio's team Petersburg I don't really know anything about them right but if they would get to the Premier League where would, I mean, they've been in existence for a long while. Where would they draw these new fans from? Would they be plastics? Would they be, would it be people that, you know, would say, well, we're really not Petersboro fans, but we live close by and we can't get tickets or we can't afford tickets to, to our team that we would love to see. So we'll at least come watch Premier League matches. Would that be more what it is, or would, would teams, there's a nice ball, and Arudia gets his 20th goal in the closing minutes of the first half in stoppage time. So, yeah, I just, you know, just kind of thinking about fans like that. How, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm curious, especially from those of you in England, because, you know, all these clubs are very entrenched. Um, you know, there's really not a lot of movement outside of a handful of teams. And and we know that, but, you know, if it would ever happen, right? I mean, you know, in reality, Man City was not a Super 6 team all that long ago. I mean, they used to suck and be in, what, third division? Uh, so, thank you. <laughs> my, uh, my granddaughter has gotten into this thing uh, where she brings everything to my desk. So, I, have, I actually have a three-foot pile over here of stuff she's just brought me over and over and over again. So that's interesting. Uh, all right, we do need to get some fresh legs on here. Do I have a central defender? William is William can play. Let's, uh, you know what? He's only played one match. Let's bring him on. Bring him on for Nimic and see if he can do anything. He's one of the aging guys. He's retiring at the end of the season. He was one of those veterans that uh, we appropriated uh, when we took over the club and haven't been able to move. Oh, hold on. You got to stay out of there, baby. That's medicine. No. That's medicine. That's a no-no. Okay? I love you, but you can't play in the meds. Oh, and I thought I hit pause, so you heard all that. Oh, well. <laughs> Just trying to save her life, you know? Don't let your kids play with medicine. I didn't realize she could open the container I had it stored in. Oh, well. I don't even know what we missed. Good through ball, and looks like... Oh, it's an offsides. I was hoping for a penalty there. So we do have the equalizer. Let's go ahead and demand more. And we're into 83rd minute. Leclerc's only playing a 6-3. I'm going to leave him on because we need... I need to figure out if he's going to be able to do anything. 
All right, Raphael Gomez. Let's bring him on. That's going to be our difference maker. Let's bring him on for uh, Ibarra because he does have a uh, yellow card. And Gomez, we're going to switch him over to an inverted winger because I believe he's right-footed. No, he yeah, he's left-footed. So, yeah, we want him cutting inside. All right, and I want to demand more, but we aren't going to do that yet. We're going to go to attacking. All right, Nathaniel Williams. He gets a highlight on video. That was a poor ball. There's Fran closing down. Headed out. Oh, but it goes right to McAloo. Look at the ball movement inside that box. Oh, my goodness. We have not lost a match in a while. Uh, let's demand more. I was a little distracted in this one, but that's, you know, that's, that's okay. I can, I can live with that. Um, we had more shots, equal on target, but just not good chances. Not good chances. Point the finger, not happy. I'm going to blame it on the rain. So now Lil can get in front of us. Let's finish out the day. They may not even play today. You know what? I bet they don't. I bet they play Saturday. I bet that's what the deal is. All right. So Valadolid have accepted our loan offer for Martinez. We've got somebody looking at Garcia. Oh, well. All right, well, I guess um, that's going to drop us to third, I'm sure, you know, because Lil's been really good this year. We're, we're shooting for top three. That's what we want to get Champions League next year. So, you know, we've got potentially a 10-point lead with six to play six that's 18 points so we're close i tell you what we're just going to come back we're just going to come back for the season finale and end the season uh unless i see that we're really struggling and then we're in danger of falling out of the top three so let's plan for nimes and havra uh, at the end of the season next episode hit that like button subscribe for daily football manager content and we will see you next time bye